and welcome to Orion Today. I am Joe Johnson and I am joined once again by Kim Urbanowski. Hey Joe, how You are made you? it back. I did, I did. <laughs> we must off. have done something right the first time around. No, I love being here, this is fun. <laughs> awesome, well Memorial Day is come and gone and so we're now in full swing in summer and things are getting busy in Lake Orion. What, uh, what kept you busy this past weekend? What kept me busy actually was um, well, a wedding, a family wedding. Um, just family things, to be honest with you. I missed out on a couple. Well, I did the food truck on Friday. We did do that. Um, prom was this weekend, so we did a lot of pictures and stuff. So um, running here and there and everywhere. Yeah, yeah so the Chamber of Commerce uh, had their second annual uh, mm -hmm. food truck rally right yeah. here in the parking lot of the Orient Center. Uh, there's at least a dozen food truck mm -hmm. vendors and there were uh, businesses, local businesses that uh, set up tents and stuff to interact with the, uh, with the visitors and it looked well attended and, um, and uh, what a blast. It was a lot yeah. of fun yeah. and um, I ended up trying, uh, they had a couple of uh, Mexican food trucks. I went with one that had some uh, pork soft tacos, corn shells. And they were outstanding. What did you go with? Um, a beer. <laughs> the beer tent. I went to the beer tent. We got there kind of late because of prom, like I said. So mm. we, we already kind of um, were full from dinner. But I did go with the beer tent. But, you know, um, all the good things were there. I mean, cookies and cream was there giving out their ice cream. And, and I missed out on the opportunity to get the little bunt cakes. Um, oh, yeah. Nothing bunt cakes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But <laughs> Those were, were tempting, but I'm like, yeah. I don't need to eat a whole bunt cake by I know, myself. I know. But they're so good. Yeah, yeah, and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, really uh, a lot of foot traffic. And mm. uh, Noelle Champagne over at the, uh, at the chamber said that the beer tent is kind of their big money maker, the yeah. beer garden. Yeah. Um, and But the event was free to the public. Sure I mean, was. obviously you had to pay for food, but um, the event's free to the public and it was just a, a great event for the community. And there were some fam family friendly things like a bounce house and, and uh, other things for kids to do. So it was Photo a really booth great and all of that family too. event. Yeah, yeah, it really was, it really was. And they were, um, they went right up to 8.30 and, and there were still people there and mm -hmm. they were trying to, you know, pack it up nicely, but you know, it was kind of like, Nobody wanted to leave, but um, <laughs> you know that was it's it's a cool event, and I'm glad to see that so many food trucks did show up. You know we had that ordinance recently, and so it was kind of mm. controversial at first, but those, those they stuck through and and, yeah. and came and fed us all. So that was yeah, cool. and it was right outside in our parking lot, so mm. that was my dinner. I just walked outside well, yeah. and ate. <laughs> That's and easy for you. <laughs> I love when things happen at the Orient Center because I don't have to go yeah. very far. Like summer sizzles coming up, so that's going to be here. Exactly. It's always yeah. been there too. And speaking of things in the parking lot, uh, Orient Township had their big summer bash, uh, the community garage sale. Mm. And this is the one where they partnered up with the Toy and Comic Expo. Mm. And so out in the parking lot, there were at least 30 vendors selling all kinds of stuff in the parking lot. And they had a beautiful day for it. Yeah. Um, and so I always get a kick out of that. But um, my thing is the Toy and Comic Expo. And, uh, I don't know if a lot of people were aware that that was going on indoors while the community grass sale was going on outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, but of course I went in there and looked around and I was good. I didn't spend any money. I probably <laughs> should have. But, I was going to uh, ask you if you did. I, was, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I do like to see your displays. You're pretty good at that. I mean, honestly. Well, I, I used to uh, have a table at the Toy and Comic Expo, but at the last one that I took part in, I sold everything. Like, no kidding. And uh, all the stuff I had was duplicate kits and sure. extras um, but someone made me an offer on everything I sold it so I'm taking a little break from uh, the Toy and Comic Expo but it's still fun to visit and seeing people that I know and yeah. uh, one of the vendors at the end there he um, he had some sports cards and I don't know if you're aware but sports cards collecting is through the roof right now. Really? He had cards on his table that were selling for five hundred, a thousand dollars. Yeah, no and kidding. there are cards like one of one, like one card is printed um, that can sell for a million dollars on at auction. And um, Holy so cow. yeah, collectibles are through the roof right now. It's really amazing. Wow. Yeah. Do you collect anything? I I do not. Well, uh, mm, I collect aprons. 
aprons. <laughs> I collect aprons when I cook. Aprons? I collect aprons. Yeah, it's okay. weird. And I've got like one for every occasion <laughs> and like one that says Darth Kim so that people know not to bother me when I've got that one on. But I'm not really a big collector. I mean, I'm a military brat, so I was, you know, we moved around a lot. So yeah. I, didn't, I learned not to collect things. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, you know, my tastes change over the years, but <clears throat> right now I collect die cast cars, mostly mm -hmm. from television and film. I have a big collection of uh, replica movie props, which sort of uh, built up over COVID. Um, so that's kind of my focus right now. But uh, I used to have a huge collection of Star Wars stuff, and I ended up selling all that. And I kind of regret it because, like the sports cards, Star Wars collectibles are through the roof right now, too. Of course. So. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we watched the new Obi-Wan oh, yeah. show, of course. Anything Star Wars I like. So yeah. I'm, I'd be happy to. <laughs> Take some of that stuff off your hands if you want. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough to keep me busy over the weekend, on Sunday there was a little uh, ceremony in Evergreen Cemetery, which is mm -hmm. located on Lapeer Road over by the lake there. And uh, we found out through the school district there was going to be a little ceremony, but I didn't really understand what was happening. I wasn't sure if it was tied into the construction mm -hmm. of the new Blant Sims Elementary uh, School, but it turns out it was just a coincidence that the ceremony was happening at the same time that uh, the new elementary school is being built. Yeah. What I found out while I was there <clears throat> is that the group that was uh, hosting this event is the Daughters of the American Revolution. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, they realized that Blanche Sims, uh, who the school was named after, uh, was one of the founding members of their chapter. Wow. And they realized that her grave marker didn't have any sort of uh, indication, indication that, right? that she was a member a founding member so that's what they revealed right there is uh, there's oh, a little wow. uh, yeah. insignia on her gravestone to commemorate the fact that she was one of the founding members that's wonderful. of the uh, the Crawford chapter which is out of Elmont um, and so that was really neat and there's a lot of history there they they actually had her that's bell beautiful. her school bell that she yeah. rang in the classroom they had it there and there's some documentation that shows uh, she's one of the founding members she's at the top there and they had her uh, little class itinerary um, on Aww. display and so yeah apparently um, the daughters of the American Revolution were putting together a list of members and stuff like that and 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 compile the list and then somehow they realized that Blaine right. Sims hadn't had been recognized as a founding member so they remedied that uh, yeah. and like I said, it was just a coincidence that um, that it happened while while Blanche Sims Elementary School is being constructed. Now, the students are still attending school at the former location right. or the existing location, um, but then I think it's the class or the, the 2023 school year is when new students, new students. are going to go yeah. to they broke um, the new. On that one. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's under construction. Yep. It's, it's, uh, it, they're, they're saying the kids could watch the new school being built. So, oh, wow. so there's going to be a transition period, but it's going to be a big deal when they cut the ribbon on that new elementary school. Well, good for her uh, the for existing Blanston School is the oldest uh, school, uh, elementary school in Lake Orion. It's, wow. So it it outlived its usefulness. And unfortunately, sure. yeah. like there was one woman who was at that ceremony that was one of the first students at the existing Plant Sims Elementary no School. Way. And so I said, how does it feel to see it getting torn down? And she said, it's, it's bittersweet to yeah. see the school, which was built in 1950, get torn down. But she's excited for the kids to have this new building, new, new building. technology. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it happens. Progress and. <sighs> exactly. But. And one other thing that happened over the weekend, I just keep going and going and going. Um, <laughs> Paint Creek Trail, one of the gems of Lake Orion. Uh, the Friends of the Paint Creek Trail had a little event in the uh, parking lot next to Children Park in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, an expo had some vendors there and then they had like an organized ride, uh, walk, run on Paint Creek Trail. Uh, so I was there to uh, cover the event, talk to some of the people from Friends of uh, Paint Creek Trail. Let's take a look at that now. Walkers, runners, and bicyclists were encouraged to celebrate National Trails Day on June 4th. Here in Lake Orion, an event was held to show off the gem known as Pink Creek Trail. On Saturday, June 4th, the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail hosted the Tour de Trail in the parking lot near Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. Numerous vendors took part in an expo that offered products and information to walkers, runners, and bikers, and visitors enjoyed food and refreshments. 
The expo was free to the public, but t-shirt sales and an organized bike ride acted as a fundraiser for the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail. The Friends of the Pink Creek Trail function as an ancillary group to the Pink Creek Trail Commission, Trailways Commission, and Trail Management. We do ancillary things like uh, uh, pay for bike racks. The bike racks, for example, you see over by Oat Soda and uh, Cookies and Cream. Those were in part sponsored by the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail. We have done water fountains. We have donated to support Lids for Kids, which is also an expo where they give away uh, free helmets to kids and give them professional fitting. So we do those kinds of things where the Trailways Commission and Trail Management and the, the municipalities along the trail, they do the maintenance, they do the, the work that has to be done every day. We do special projects. Paint Creek Trail runs from Lake Orion to Rochester Municipal Park following the former Detroit and Bay City Railroad that began offering service in 1872. Penn Central sold a segment of railroad to a trail commission in 1983, who then surfaced the eight-foot-wide trail with crushed limestone in the early 1990s. I've done a lot of trails, both in the United States and in Europe, and this is one of the best. It is. We have over 100,000 people that use it every year, and everyone loves it. The Friends of the Pink Creek Trail meets quarterly at the Pink Creek Cider Mill. Their next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, August 11th at 6.30 p.m. For more information, you can call 248-651-9260 or visit pinkcreektrailfriends.org. And welcome back to Orion today. And we are now joined by the library director, Chase McMunn, and Shane Coppitz. Welcome to our show. Pleasure to be here. Lots going on over at the library. Um, first of all, welcome to the community. I know you've been there a little while, but how are things going as the uh, relatively new director at the library? Things are going really well. Yeah, it's uh, community has been very welcoming. Um, I've had a chance to meet a few people, looking to meet a lot more. Um, obviously, there's a lot to catch up on. Um, filling big shoes from the previous director and uh, library staff just has things going. <coughs> it, it's amazing. Um, we just got a new roof, so that's exciting. <laughs> no more leaks. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm settling in and it's, it's really good. Last time I saw you was at the uh, Battle of the Books. Uh, what a fun event that was. That was your first Battle of the Books. What was that experience like? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd never been to anything quite like that. You know, a bunch of um, um, grade schoolers packed into a gym um, and there for reading. So it was, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that <coughs> event. Um, and it was, it was just a total fun, like parents holding up their homemade signs supporting. It, it, it was, it had all the kind of makings of a sports rally, yeah. but for books, you know, and that's, that's always really fun. That's what's so neat about that event. You know, you, you have your athletes, you have your, your, the musicians, and they have their competitions and things that they, they take part in. And it's so great to see these kids who have this love of reading, competing, and getting into it, and wearing the costumes, and having fun. <coughs> it's uh, such a great event. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy covering that every year. Um, but what you're here to promote uh, today is the upcoming uh, Summer Reading Kickoff. Uh, I know that's something you do every year where uh, kids are be getting off school, if not already, they're almost off school for the school year. Um, but you want to enc encourage kids to continue reading once school comes to an end. Talk about the summer reading program. Yeah, well that's, that's why we do it, is because um, it's pretty well established that the summer slide, you know, kids are out of school and they're not reading anymore and they start to lose some of those skills. So that, that's why libraries do summer reading programs. Is, to step in and encourage kids to read, read for fun. That's that's a really important aspect of it too. Um, is that they're doing it for their enjoyment, and so we just step in to to help make it fun for them by offering prizes, games along the way, um, and then just encourage them to to continue reading for fun over the summer. Are Are you planning on holding it outdoors again this year? Uh, yep, it's going to be mostly outdoors. I will say this is the first time we've really got, we're going to do the the big kickoff. Um, that'll be this Saturday um, from 11 to 1. Uh, we're hoping to see hundreds of people there. Uh, it's the first time in three years that oh, we, wow. we've been able to hold that. So we're really excited uh, to be able to offer that sort of big activity for the community. 
uh, we'll have a we'll have a DJ, bounce houses, um, yeah, lot lots going on that day to, oh, to entertain that's, people. That's fun, and it brings a lot of people out to the library. So talk about how the summer pre uh, reading program works. So uh, as and it doesn't just have to be kids, right? Like anyone can take part in it. Um, so they they read and then they log it. Talk about how that works. Yeah, we have written logs that they can come pick up at the library. They sign up, um, and it's for all ages. I should make sure that said. We're, we focus on school age a lot of the time, <laughs> but you know we really want those adults modeling that good behavior too. So we've got events for the whole age range. Um, come pick up your um, little log that you keep track of the, the books that you read, and as you log, you can bring it back in, earn prizes. We've got um, a lot of gift cards for businesses in the community. And you, every time you bring it in, you get entered to win the grand prize. Um, so for adults, we have uh, a Kobo e-reader as a grand prize, um, and we have a $100 gift certificate um, as another prize for teens. So yeah, every age range, uh, something to read for. Yeah, I see here there are several programs or tiers. So is it broken into those different age groups? Exactly. That's so awesome. the other thing that's great is you have the opportunity to have activities here in the community that are also related to books. Um, you can read to your pet and earn <laughs> earn some activity points. You Aww. can visit a little library. You can use our app. So there are things that will encourage you wherever you are to not only get involved with reading at whatever level you're at, you can also have, that's one of the great things about the theme this year, which is Oceans of Possibilities, which is so perfect for a city and a community like Lake Orion to have that opportunity. And there are things that read at the beach, read while you're on vacation if you're going somewhere, read to someone else, check out an audio book. So it's meant to get us away from screens and at the same time involve this kind of visceral activity with the books yeah. in spaces that may you may not think of <laughs> um, and not necessarily um, like library focused or home focused, which is great. That's so awesome. I love my Hoopla app, and I just, you know, I like how we can check out books on that. Um, I didn't know that you guys had a, an adult challenge. I made for myself a challenge on goodreads.com mm -hmm. to do just 12 books this year. And so when I was at the, the book sale, I bought 23 books. And they're out in front and waiting for me. So it's either reading a book or listening to Hoopla, um, you know, maybe while you're walking on the trails or something. Right. So yeah. this is awesome. I like the adult challenge. Do you have something maybe on the website where if someone's looking for titles, do you have any recommendations, that sort of thing that people can go to? Yeah, there's, um, there's some recommended reading lists that we have on our website. And um, if you drop in the library, we definitely have a lot of, um, you know, brochures that have recommended staff picks. Um, we have lots of displays from staff picks. So uh, I would always recommend going and talking to the staff. They're really the best resource. <laughs> um, they are really familiar with the collection and, and they're really good at listening to what people enjoy. Yeah. And so it's not, you don't just have to rely on a list. They, they'll you know hear what you enjoy and they'll, they'll go from there to, to like pick a book just for you. you That's know? awesome. And the, the summer reading program is also an opportunity to meet the director, right? <laughs> yes. So you're going to do a meet and greet on Saturday? Yeah, that's right. Um, it'll be during the kickoff, so hopefully people have time while they're there to stop by and say hello. Um, I do want to meet as many people as possible. Yes. So we'll be there. We'll have, we'll have ice cream. Um, mm -hmm. To try to get people you know, away from <laughs> the DJ way. and you know I'll, I'll, <laughs> maybe a little less exciting space, but yeah, um, ply people with some ice cream and get them over to to say hello and um, they can ask me questions if they have questions or just say hello. That's okay too. But yeah, I'd love to to have a chance to to meet with everybody. And of course, uh, there's the kickoff, but then there's the finale. Talk about the finale and when that happens. So there is a teen party. They're going all out this year. Uh -huh. It is on a Friday night. It starts at five o'clock. People do need to register. Okay. So this is a registration basically so that the library knows how many snacks to get, et cetera. Um, we'll have Velcro wall. 
<gasps> We're kidding. <laughs> no. oh, that sounds cool. See, are you excited? I can I tell. I'm a, I'm a team. <laughs> you know. Um, we will have bungee basketball. We'll have oh, inflatables. Wow. Um, we'll have a make your own snow cone, mm -hmm. so you can DIY your snow cones. <laughs> um, and it, again, it's just to celebrate these accomplishments that the teens have made. Um, the next day is the youth party. Mm -hmm. We will have Baffling Bill, a magician, mm -hmm. who will be available. Um, again, 11 to 1 for that. Um, and it really is not only like kickoff, a time to kind of get together, be surrounded by folks who really love to read, really want to participate right. in the community efforts to expand our reading and mm -hmm. think about the way we think about books and just um, information in general, but also to kind of celebrate your accomplishments and be happy that you hit these milestones. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I want to put each of you on the spot. Okay. What is on your nightstand right now? Um, well, I just finished um, Chronicle of a Death Foretold. Um, I was, I was, I'm trying to alternate between sort of classic or, you know, must read and then something that's maybe a little, little lighter. <laughs> so that one was the one I finished and I, I'm not sure where I'm, I was, I was going to read, um, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> anyway, I have 23 books on the from, spot. <laughs> I have 23 books. Tw oh so my Chronicle gosh. of a Death Foretold. What's that um, about? Is it fantasy? You know, or? It's a very small, it's a novella written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez who wrote um, A Thousand Years in, Sol in Solitude, Solid. I think. Um, so I wanted to kind of ease into his stuff, but it's more of a, like a telling a news story. It's like a journalistic sort of writing um, about a man who lives in a small town, I think it's in Colombia, based on a true story from what I understand. But there's a wedding the night before, and, and the bride is sort of um, dishonored her family or something, and th the husband returns her, and <laughs> returns she, her. She, he returns. This is very, like, old school stuff, wow. but um, it's sort of just like a, it's got this mystical, magical sort of writing style to it, um, and it's just about honor, and, but this, this man is killed by the bride's brothers, um, but <laughs> yeah. everybody knew it was going to happen, but nobody stopped it, and so it's mm -hmm. the retelling of that. And it's just really, it's interesting. I mean, it's not really barbaric or anything, but it's, um, it was interesting. Was Light like summer one. reading. Right, it was <laughs> just really short. I read it in a day. I was oh, done with wow. it in a day. I thought it was, you know, wow. it's interesting. Shane, what's on your nightstand? Um, I am reading a book of poems by Dave Alvin, who was in a, seminal band called the blasters he's also been in the band x um some early kind of california 80s punk Ooh. and like um alt country kind of rockabilly band <laughs> gotta write that down um <laughs> it is called any rough times are now behind you and oh. it is just a collection of poems that he wrote um both in the band and on the road and as a solo performer interesting awesome. so any of them get turned into songs because I think that's how songs so, originate sometimes. One of the things um, any rough time um, um, any rough times are now behind you is actually the conclusion of a poem that he basically writes in stanzas about both his touring relationship and a romantic relationship that he's involved in. So it's very interesting and not to give anything away but it was at the like the many conclusions of many times of, of both relationships that he goes out to eat and that phrase is kind of brought to him while oh, he is okay. eating. Oh. Interesting. I'll have to write that down. Anyway. It's out of print, so <laughs> oh, okay. you can borrow my copy. <laughs> <There you laughs> Yay! The library. Yay. Yeah. Or you can get an ILL at the library. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Chase, what are you reading this summer? You're not going to believe it. I'm actually reading Pillars of the Earth right now I, uh, by Ken Follett. Um, I, I imagine many people watching have, have already read that. Um, <laughs> I always avoided it because it, it isn't something you're going to read real in a day. Uh, <laughs> it's thick. Um, and uh, I always wondered how a novel about building a cathedral could be really interesting. Um, but someone I know recommended it, said it was... Um, actually uh, very much a page turner. And I've actually found that to be true. Uh, I, I just started a while ago. So far it is a very uh, fast-paced book. Um, 
And yeah, it is quite the page turner. I guess Ken Follett started writing thrillers in his career, and so Pillars of the Earth was his first historical fiction. Um, and I, d I generally do enjoy historical fiction. I was a history major in college. Um, I do suffer this affliction, though, if I try to read a history nonfiction <laughs> book. I generally fall asleep. So <laughs> 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 I don't get too far through them. So I do enjoy historical fiction, and I've I found that one to be a really good one so far. Awesome. Yeah, and then otherwise, I also spend a lot of time reading to my son. Um, we I do you know bedtime stories, and so uh, we've recently read a few books from the it's the Last Kids on Earth is a Netflix series, and it's also a kind of combination novel graphic novel. Um, but um, you know, read for enjoyment, and he enjoys kids and zombies. So <laughs> we're going to read about kids and zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he doesn't get nightmares. What are you yeah. reading? That's awesome. Literally sitting on my end table next to my bed. I haven't cracked it open yet, but I'm getting there. Is, um, it's uh, I think it's called Castle on the Hill, and it's uh, it's about the Chateau Marmont, which is in mm -hmm. L.A. Yeah. Um, and it is a famous structure that's been in Hollywood forever and all the movie stars everything would live there Infamous, at yeah. various times and it was very behind closed doors sort of a thing and lots of intrigue uh, John Belushi died there mm. um, lots of interesting things have happened there so I right. was going to read up about the history of that and next up uh, it's a book about this thick it's the biography of a director named Michael Curtiz who uh, directed some of my favorite movies like Casablanca and The Adventures mm -hmm. of Robin Hood. And it's funny, like I was watching a lot of classic movies and I'd go, who directed this? And I'd say, <laughs> Michael Curtiz. And then I'd watch another one and go, that was great. Who directed this? Michael Curtiz. Huh. And it turns out he directed a lot of my favorite movies. So I'm going to crack open his biography real soon. Oh, you'll so. love that, I'm sure. I love entertainment-related stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, one last thing before we go, there's another event coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, the uh, Road Rally. Do you want to promote the Road Rally? Yeah. Yes, let's promote the Road <laughs> Rally. So yes. as, um, as with summer reading, this has been on hold because of everything that's happened over the last couple of years. Um, we are signing up groups um, in, everybody has to be in one vehicle if you get stymied by the five person entry, do not worry, we can get you <laughs> beyond that. Right. Um, so you can have as many folks that fit legally, comfortably, and <laughs> safely in your vehicle, um, but you all must be together. You're going to go around the community discovering clues and answering questions. Again, I know, how much fun is that? <laughs> and it's just a great time to, again, spend time with some folks that you care about, maybe family, maybe friends, maybe neighbors, get together, explore the community, solve puzzles, and head back to the library and possibly win some prizes. Listen. There you go. Sounds like you get a to blast. go to the library, you always get to get good books, and you get prizes and snow cones. <laughs> I know. Right. Wherever you go. Right. There's no downside. Where is the downside? The library is <laughs> one of my favorite places, honestly. It's, it's, you all do so much for the community. and I mean, just looking through, you know, Orion Living and your section, there's so much stuff. I mean, ugh, you guys do such a good job. Thank We're you. very Thank proud you. to have yeah. um, a wonderful library. Yeah, I, I feel like... The, the library has redefined what a library mm -hmm. can be with the technology and the little room over there that has all the gadgets yeah, that are available yeah, for the community space, to yeah. use and uh, computer access and all that stuff. Uh, you guys are on the forefront of what a library should be. Truly. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you for Absolutely, having us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, any contact info you want to give out before we go? Uh, how can people reach, uh, reach you at the library? Um, come in. The website. <laughs> yeah, <come see. laughs> the website has all our events. Yeah, if if you want a full list of all the events that we have upcoming, you can go to orionlibrary.org uh, and click on events. And th right now, there's a big banner for summer reading, so you can click on that and learn all you need to know about summer reading. Um, but yeah, uh, if you search, if you find our phone number, you can always give us a call, and we'll be happy to pick up the phone and talk to you too. All right. Awesome. Thanks. 
All right, so next up, uh, the Wildwood Summer Concert Series is going to be kicking off on June 14th, Yes, is it? it is. And leading the season, as always, is the North Oakland Concert Band. And uh, we recorded them recently at the high school. And so let's give you a little sample of the North Oakland Concert Band and uh, who will be kicking off the Wildwood Concert Series very, very soon. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to Orion Today. Joe Johnson here, joined by Kim Urbanowski. Uh, North Oakland concert band always entertains. Uh, a big part of that uh, is George Sennett, who plays the saxophone mm -hmm. with them. And he's very active here at ONTV. Um, and when we're not doing musical programs here in the studio, he's hosting a talk show called Active Living, and he brings in people who talk about their travels. I've been a guest talking about my Hollywood adventures. Um, but he recently had a, a really fascinating guest here in the studio. Um, his name is Jerry McKenzie, and he was a drummer during the big band era, if you can wow. believe it. And he played with uh, Stan Kenton Orchestra as well as some other big names. And uh, it was a really fascinating interview. And unfortunately, when the interview ended, him and I were chit-chatting afterward, and he had more incredible stories. So I'm hoping <laughs> that George is going to bring him in to talk more about his career. But uh, here's a snippet from Active Living uh, with uh, Jerry McKenzie as the guest. Hello and welcome to another special program we have today. We have a very special guest. The guy's name is Jerry McKenzie. I don't know if you musicians out there have heard of Jerry before, but he's a rather famous individual, at least in his own mind. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Jerry, Jerry has, uh, has a ton of experience. He's worked around the Detroit area for years, but he is even, even more famous than that. He's, uh, he's worked with the famous, one of my favorite bands, the Stan Kenton Band. So Jerry, where the heck did you get interested in music? Well, first, let me say how nice it is to be here with you and share these uh, uh, stories that, because people like to hear a lot of the stories right. behind the scenes. I, 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 my mother took me to the Fox Theater many, many years ago. I was three years old, and I was fortunate enough to see Norman Grand's Jazz at the Philharmonic. And, of course, at that time, Gene Krupa was with uh, Norman Grand's uh, Louis Belson was with Norman Granz and Buddy Rich was with Louis. Well, three of the best drummers yeah. in the business. And also that's where I got a great chance to hear a marvelous, marvelous trio was Oscar Peterson with Ray Brown and the drummer was Ed, Ed Thigpen. And at that time I became engrossed in watching Gene and to make a real long story short I told my mother, I said, that's what I want to do. I want to play the drums. And how old were you at this point? I was three years old. Oh, jeez, that's great. And fortunately, to speed it up, the story, at age six, my mother was fortunate enough to find a drum teacher at age six. So I wow. started at age six, George. Wow. So, and I assume you learned how to read music and you, you played with, did you play with high school bands or anything like that? Yes, yes. I was the uh, captain of the marching band. We had uh, eight snare drummers and I was the one who blew all the whistles and all the commands for the band to start down the field, back up the field, and right. off the field. And all that, yes. Were these guys that, that went out front and, and did the, the back bends that go way, all the way back, you know, and come back up? Uh, you, you no, we, we did not do that at that time, George. You didn't no. do that, huh? No. Well, tell me about, you know, where you started actually playing with big bands, because that's where you're kind of a famous guy. I, my, my first big band was actually, believe it or not, was... Uh, 
the Glenn Miller Band, okay, under really? the direction of Ray McKinley. Okay? You played with that band? Yes, I went, and I also did uh, some uh, musical things with Tex Beneke, who led the band right. at that time. Oh, yeah. Tex Beneke. Ray was, uh, I was on the band when Ray McKinley was with the band. Okay. And Ray and I shared the drum chair. So I was m mainly known as the, uh, the ballad drummer. And, and how old were you at this point? I was uh, 20. 20 years old, wow. Yes. What a yes. great experience. Actually, just shy of 20, okay? And I, I was on the band uh, at that particular time with Ray. And at that time, so many bands were touring, George. They were all touring. We used to bump into other bands and Stan Kenton. We would be checking in the hotel. Right. Stan's band would be checking out. So I got to know Stan, okay? Just, you know, hello, how are you? Nice to see you again yeah. in, that, in that particular situation, okay? But before you got to the point where you were playing with the Ray McKinley band and some of those other bands, you must, have, you must have done some stuff in high school. and Yes, I was fortunate enough to play with a big band in, in high school. It was just a, a like a, a lab band, okay. Uh, okay, at that time. And also I worked with a small group that had, it was called the Sammy D Quintet. Okay. We were on a TV show every Saturday similar to uh, Dick Clark's Bandstand. So I got a lot of exposure with that group, it was two tenor saxophones, piano, guitar, and drums. Fantastic. And it was, the saxophone players used to have what was called the Battle of the Saxes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The one person would lay on the floor, and the other <laughs> sax player would blow down to him on the floor <laughs> with the saxophone and push his way all around the dance floor. So yeah, it's amazing who you find out are your neighbors here in Lake Orion in the Orion area that have amazing stories and histories. And uh, we were talking off camera that after the show, um, after he was interviewed, um, we chatted a little bit about some of the people he performed with. And one of the names he mentioned was Rosemary Clooney. Like he played for Rosemary Clooney when she performed live. and. Just names like that, it's and incredible. I was blown away. We have to bring him back in to talk more about his career. Oh, I'm sure he's got a lot of stories. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, so much talent here. I mean, George, who hosted that, uh, he's an amazing sax player, but he's talented on a wide variety of instruments and uh, uh, so much talent in this community. I miss hearing them play. Yeah. Or like when they were practicing. Yeah, yeah. To the chamber office. Well, we're getting back to it, and there's going to be a lot of concerts this summer. Uh, Orion Live, I think it's called. They have a huge list. I should have had it with me. They gave me a card with all the upcoming concerts that are going to be taking place in Lake Orion this year. Yeah. One of the names that jumps out at me is Mitch Ryder. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch Ryder is going to be performing live yes. here in Lake Orion, so yes. hoping we can get some cameras out there and record that performance. That's uh, really You can great. go to um, Orion.events Orion to, to find the, to list, see the list. Starts, so the kickoff is, for them, is this Friday, I believe. Yeah, the kickoff is this Friday for those events, and then, you know, there's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with all, like, there's a Bon Jovi tribute band on Saturday, and... Mm -hmm couple other things. But. It's funny when I was driving past the entrance to Wildwood you see this little sandwich sign yeah. on the road and it doesn't really I don't think it says tribute it just says Bon Jovi and like yeah. some other big <laughs> names and I'm like wow am I time traveling what is right going right. on here. It's so. very small print. The, the, the tribute is very small print but you so, know what yeah. those are those are really fun um, you know I went to a couple of them last year the Prince tribute one and stuff when you just get really lost in it some of these some of these groups are amazing and, and they're just really good at what they do and you just sort of start to feel like they're, you're really in front of that particular artist. So it's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, that's, why I like yeah that's awesome. So a lot going on at Wildwood, at the Gazebo in Children's Park, mm -hmm. uh, 20 Front Street. And later this summer, we have, uh, what's the one over at Camp Agawam? Uh, Tommy Stock, mm -hmm. a little music festival at Tommy Stock later this summer. So yes. lots to see and do. Hello, in Lake Palooza, Orion too. Yeah, and Hello, Palooza, of course. Yeah, September. big fundraiser. So 
Uh, we'll keep you on future episodes. We'll keep you up to date on all the events that are happening in Lake Orion. Uh, let's switch over to sports. Um, high school sports is just excelling this season. <laughs> Division championships and titles are, are galore. Um, so Joey Tysek is uh, going to do a little uh, update on uh, how uh, local sports uh, teams are doing. Uh, Joey, take it away. Welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we highlight softball, boys varsity lacrosse, girls varsity soccer, track, and more. The spring season is coming to an end as many of the Dragons are competing in playoffs and performing well. Let's see how they did. The Dragons varsity softball team had a fantastic season as they won the league title over Stony Creek. This is the first OAA red title since 2016 for the Dragons. They entered the district tournament on Saturday, June 4th at Lake Orion High School. In the semifinal, the Dragons would face Waterford Kettering. Lake Orion made quick work of the captains after a bit of a slow start, but would ultimately win the game 19-5. This would take the Dragons to the championship game against well-known rival Clarkston. The Wolves defeated Oxford 10-9 in their semifinal game. Lake Orion and Clarkson play each other a lot, so the two teams are quite familiar with each other. The games tend to be close, but Lake Orion got the better of Clarkson during the regular season as they beat the Wolves in both of the previous matchups. Lake Orion knew Clarkson was going to be tough, but their bats have been the key all season, and it stayed that way in the championship. Lake Orion would beat the Wolves 11-5, winning the district championship. Lake Orion will now head to the Region 7 tournament at Oxford in hopes of making it to the state quarterfinals. They will again play a tough but familiar opponent in Rochester Adams. Good luck, ladies. The varsity baseball team has had an amazing season and finished the regular season 26-9, and we're now heading into the district tournament. In the semifinals, they would face Waterford Mott. The Dragons would win the game 11-1. Carson Coach would get the win on the mound after his four innings of work, allowing only one hit, three walks, and 10 strikeouts on 75 pitches. Senior right fielder Ryan Stimmick went 4-4 four four on the day with a homer, two runs, and five RBIs, along with two stolen bases. Senior catcher Tony Grazioli would also hit two for three with a double. This would then put the Dragons into the district final game against Oxford on June 4th. This game would be another dominant win by the Dragons, taking it 16-3 over the Wildcats giving the Dragons their 11th district title, but the first since 2017. Senior lefty Evan Waters got the win with six innings pitched, giving up two runs and striking out nine. Junior shortstop Connor McCartan went two of five with two doubles, two runs, and two RBIs. With the win, it puts the Dragons into the regional tournament, where they will face off against Rochester Adams tomorrow, June 8th. The varsity girls soccer team also was looking for a district title, and they would have home field advantage throughout the tournament. But they first had to face off against Flushing, whose record is 13-6-2, and, and are coming off a first-round win against Lapeer 4-0. Lake Orion had the first-round bye, so they had to be ready to play, as technically they were the underdog in this game. But as we've seen throughout the season, this Dragon defense keeps them in games, and they can hang with almost anyone if they can find the net on offense. In this game, they showed just how good their defense is, and they held Flushing to zero goals, and the Dragons put up two, pitting them in the district final against Oxford on June 2nd. Again, Lake Orion would find themselves against a familiar and tough opponent. The Dragons were able to close out a close victory in the regular season 2-1 at the beginning of May, so you know the Wildcats would be looking to bounce back in the district final. However, the Dragons' defense once again did not allow a single goal, and junior Audrey Llewellyn scored the only goal of the game to give the Dragons their second straight district title. This is now the fifth title in program history, and they have all come since 2004. Lake Orion will now play Bloomfield Hills tonight in Novi at 7 p.m. Bloomfield Hills beat Lake Orion in the regular season, but the Dragons are playing at their best right now and can definitely keep the season alive. Good luck, Dragons. After beating Utica Eisenhower in the first round of regionals, the boys varsity lacrosse team would find themselves against Romeo in the semifinals on May 25th. Lake Orion would keep up their strong play 
and beat Romeo 12-4 to advance to the regional final against Stony Creek on May 31st. Once again, Lake Orion made quick work of the Cougars and cruised to the win 16-1, putting them into the state quarterfinals. The state quarterfinal was played on Saturday, June 4th at Troy Athens High School. The Dragons would play the always tough Brother Rice, who Lake Orion beat towards the end of the season in a close game. Brother Rice was looking to get the last say in that matchup as they were able to take down the Dragons 17-7. Another great season from the Dragons, coming up just short of the Final Four. This Dragons team will lose a lot of seniors, but they always have the next guys up ready to play, and I'm sure they will be back at it again next year. The girls' varsity lacrosse team also had a successful season as they finished 10-5 on the year. In their first round of regionals, they faced off against Oxford at Lake Orion High School. The Dragons were able to take down the rival Wildcats 12-7 and would go on to face a very tough Heartland Eagle squad, who was 16-3 during the regular season. Lake Orion would unfortunately be unable to keep up with the Heartland's offense and would lose 5-16 to end their season. Similar to the boys' team, though, this team should be poised to make another run next year. Solid season by the Dragons. Lake Orion Track and Field hit the big stage on Saturday, June 4th for the state championships hosted by Rockford High School. Lake Orion ran well at the event and even got a few All-State honors. Stephen Brown finished 7th in the 100-meter final, making him an All-State runner, along with Joey Theed finishing 8th in the 110 hurdles. Lake Orion's 4x100 team finished 3rd overall, and the 4x200 finished 5th. For the distance runners, Clayton Kuiper finished 19th in the mile, with a 428, and Hong Bing Tang with another PR was 15th in the 3200 of 935. What a season for the boys. On the girls' side, Elena Tish just missed out on the finals as she would finish 23rd in prelims with a 13-13 100-meter dash. The girls' relay teams also had solid finishes of 13th in the 4x100 and 10th in the 4x200. Carly Nebel also finished 20th in the pole vault finals. Great work all around from the Lake Orion track and field teams. A couple of other notes to make were that the Lake Orion boys varsity golf team has also qualified for the state tournament after placing third in their regional, which was held at Twin Lakes on June 1st. Lake Orion had the top place individual finisher, Connor Fox, who shot at 69, along with Andrew Jaquise shooting 75 to put them in the top 10 as well. The state finals will be played on June 10th at Khaki, which is in Big Rapids at Fair State University. Good luck, Dragons. Also, Lake Orion's sophomore tennis player Sienna Osborne made a deep run in the Division I Girls Varsity Individual State Tournament. She was given the fourth overall seed as she lost in the regional final against Nicole Fu of Rochester Adams. Sienna would play well and make it to the state semifinals until she lost to the number one seed and eventual overall champion, Reese Miller. Sienna kept the games close as she lost 2-6 and 3-6. What a great effort by Sienna and I'm sure she will be back next year. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. So lots of stuff happening with uh, Lake Orion Sports. Lots of success. Uh, congratulations okay. to all those teams that are doing so well. Hard work, uh, hard work. Obviously things are winding down. Graduation yes. is this uh, Thursday. Thursday. We will be there at the high school graduation, recording that at Pine, Pine Knob. Knob. Feels good to say Pine Knob again. It does. Um, so one thing I look forward to, uh, you know, during the summer, the the summer blockbusters. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we got away from that uh, the last couple of years, right. but uh, Tom Cruise insisted that uh, Maverick be shown only in theaters. And I saw it about a week or so ago and absolutely loved it. Have you had a chance to see it yet? Not yet, but I am going to. So, yeah. I mean, it, I have love for the first Top Gun, a lot of love for it, and so I am looking forward to this one. I will Definitely. say that I, I think the new one is better than the first one. And wow. I was sitting at my desk, I get these uh, email alerts that 
mention Lake Orion or Orion Township. And to my surprise, I get this email that says uh, Lake Orion alumni uh, does all the flying yeah. in Maverick. And so basically they had these two-seater uh, jets and the camera would be on the actor while this Lake Orion graduate flew the plane. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the appeals of this new movie is that there's very little CGI. These are actors in planes flying. And to find out that a Lake Orion graduate uh, who went away and joined the Navy uh, did the flying for this movie. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It is very cool. If uh, if he comes back home to visit, we got to get him in the studio oh, we and have to talk get him in about the, yeah. his experiences. That's Definitely. such a neat story. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. I have a love for, obviously, you know, Navy airplanes. It's sort of oh, sure. what... Lee did his whole, you know, his whole career, and that's what I was trained in. So yeah, my dad's a Navy like a veteran. Good, yeah. He uh, was stationed in uh, Chula Vista, California, mm -hmm. San Diego area. Uh, mm -hmm. Then he went to Spain, where he met my mom, brought Yoda. her back to the U.S. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm a Navy child as Navy well. Brat. I, was, I was born in San Diego, and then family came to uh, to uh, Michigan. So I knew yeah. I liked you for some reason. Yep. <laughs> Many reasons, but that's probably there you go. <laughs> something. Um, all right, so finally, our last segment uh, is a calendar of events of what's happening here in the community. Uh, so, Becky, tell us what's happening here in Lake Orion in the next couple of weeks or so. Independence Oaks County Park will be hosting an adult kayak clinic this Friday from 10 to 2. You will learn the basics of kayaking and how to use the accessible launch. The cost is $10 per person. Reserve your spot by calling or texting 248-221-8040. Well, grab your fishing pole for Michigan's free fishing weekend. On June 11th and 12th, all fishing license fees will be waived. Residents and out-of-state visitors may enjoy fishing on both inland and the Great Lakes waters for all species of fish. All fishing regulations will still apply. Join the Orient Parks and Rec for the Dragon Trail Family Bike Ride. This family bike ride will take place this Saturday beginning at 10 a.m. The route will start and end at the Orient Center and follow the paths and trails for approximately 10 to 15 miles. Helmets are required and registration is requested at orientparks.com. Celebrate the start of summer with the Orient Library Summer Reading Kickoff this Saturday. Children, teens, and adults can pick up their summer reading trackers. This outdoor party takes place in the reading garden from 11 to 1 and includes a bounce house, climbing wall, balloon animals, face paintings, and more. Stop by for an afternoon of family fun. Registration is open for the Orient Community Road Rally. The rally will take place on Saturday, June 18th. Solve puzzles on the road and find mystery destinations all over Orient Township. Team captains must register their car by Sunday, June 12th at orientlibrary.org. Let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for evening showers with a high of 72 and low 53. Partly cloudy skies on Thursday with a high of 72 and low 53. Evening showers on Friday with a high of 73 and low 52. Partly cloudy skies on Saturday with a high of 69 and low 50. And partly cloudy again on Sunday with a high of 71 and low 54. Well, that's it for this week's ONTV Quick It. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So recently on uh, Orient Today, uh, on our last episode, we talked about uh, the big kickball tournament yeah. that took place at Friendship Park, uh, which acted as a fundraiser for Miracle Field. Uh, the Rochester Hills team that won the whole thing was nice enough to donate the grand prize mm. back to Miracle Field. And one of the things that that money is, is going toward is a new concession yes. stand. You want to elaborate on that? Yeah, home plate concession stand. It's been under construction, it feels like forever, but mm. they are finally uh, going to be able to cut the ribbon on June 18th. So they're starting at noon. The Miracle Field uh, League is starting at, uh, at 11 o'clock and they're having a triple head triple header games so right after uh, those games they're going to do the ribbon cutting mm. at the um, um, at the concession stand family activities balloon artists face painting that type of thing and some special guests um, I think I think Chris said that somebody from the voice was coming to sing oh wow I'm not sure I don't watch the show but like <laughs> you know he's trying to be real um, there are special guests and some local celebrities coming but um, they're also going to have food, you know, the, the food will be free, but they'll be taking donations if you want. But um, oh, wow. it should be really cool. I mean, it's been a while since that, that we've been waiting for that concession stand. And they'll have special needs um, 
folks there working in it too. So, yeah, that's, so that's really nice. What's really cool about that is that the concession stand will be operated by mm -hmm. the very people who pl Correct. use the field, who play on the field. Right. Um, and any proceeds that are generated at the concession stand will go back right into back Miracle it. Field to keep up uh, the upkeep on that. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, Miracle Field literally levels the playing field yes. so that anyone of any ability can take part in softball, kickball, any event that's going on on the turf there uh, and enjoy that home run ball and the crowd cheering. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing to see. If, if you are feeling at, at, in any way down or you know, blue or whatever, come to one of the games, honestly. You, you can't help but smile and be excited for these kids who are playing. It's, it's just the most wonderful thing to see. So, um, so come on the 18th and yep. watch the games. And Week from Saturday, so the, the Library Road Rally, I believe, is in the morning, Wonder and then yeah, uh, the Concession Stand Grand Opening and all the games are gonna be that afternoon. So I will be at both <laughs> shooting video, and we As hope always. to see you there. And uh, Kim, thanks for sitting in this week. Thanks for having me again. And that was fun. Uh, a couple of weird glitches uh, during the show, but uh, <laughs> we get past it as always. Great team here. And uh, thanks for watching Orion today, and we'll be, we'll be back in two weeks with a brand new episode. So we'll see you then.